As you'll know, if you've been following my channel for a little while, I'm not a huge fan of AI when it comes to anything other than automation. I don't believe we should be outsourcing our creativity to machines, but I do think there are applications for this technology to remove some of the drudgery from our lives. And when it comes to AI, there's one photo processing application that's been built around this technology right from its initial release three years ago. I'm, of course, talking about XI photo and in this video i will be checking out the latest 2024 release putting its refurbished ai tools to the test and finding out if it's bot or not XI Photo is an asset manager designed to work alongside apps like Adobe Lightroom and Capture One. At its most basic level, it's an organizational tool which enables you to catalog your images, rate and tag them, edit them with an external app and perform basic file functions such as moving and renaming. Since this is a fully database driven app, you cannot simply browse your photos. Instead, all images have to be imported into the catalog because Many of the AI features rely upon that. I imported my 2023 photo folder into XI and it took 55 minutes to ingest the 21,638 images. That's 0.15 seconds per photo or roughly 45 seconds for your average 300 image import. So importing photos is nice and speedy and I'm happy to say that the interface is fast too. Absolutely no delays in scrolling or resizing thumbnails. The core of the app however is all about leveraging the power of AI to simplify the management of a large catalogue of photographs and the efficient locating of images using machine learning tools. The core AI-based tools in XI are AI keywording, text search, find duplicates, find by similarity, find people and analytics. I started out by testing the keywording. One of the problems I keep running across with many of the AI keywording implementations I've been seeing in this current generation of asset management and editing apps is vague keywords. I'm sorry to say that XI Photo suffers from exactly the same issue. So I've imported all of my photos from 2023 into this for the purposes of testing it. And here's an example. This is an aerial shot of a local river. And the keywords that XI has come up with to help me find this photograph is beach, nature, sand, sky, and sunset. None of those keywords will ever help me find that photo. They're too vague. Okay, let's go to a completely different directory, find a completely different image. Okay, so hopefully we're going to see the word fireworks in here. So we've got fireworks and night sky. So thumbs up for that one at least. There's not a lot else you could really say about that photograph. Okay, here's a photo. We've got some seashells. Is it going to call that? No. You know, that's kind of the primary point of this photograph isn't it the seashells if you were going to say this photograph was about anything you'd say it's seashells on a beach and we've got beach nature and sand no mention of the shells this problem with vague keywords seems to be bedeviling these applications very few of them seem to get it right so a tepid thumbs up then for the ai keywording like on one photo or 2024 which i reviewed last month Many of these AI keywording tools suffer from, and I'm being polite here, a lack of precision. Technically speaking, the keywords, nature, beach, etc., are accurate. But if they don't help you find your photograph, what exactly is the point of them? Given how the keywording tool went, I must admit I wasn't expecting much from the conversational text search tool. Kind of be surprised then when it turned out to be half decent. Having seen that it is possible to build a functional conversational AI based search tool thanks to Peak2 from the French developers, Syme was very keen on checking out XI Photos conversational search. Let's kick it off with the same one I tried with Peak2. So that was children playing on a beach at sunset and as you can see the first few iterations of that are pretty good however 
there are a lot of false negatives in here as we scroll down the page plenty of photos of just sunsets no kids present in the photos plain or otherwise now we've got surfers we've got random photographs of the ocean when you do the searching you can change how strict the definition is i've got this set to one because i've been testing this and i found that anything other than one is kind of pointless because otherwise you just end up with a, a screen full of false negatives it's not very useful so I've kept it at one. Now, one of the other things that I do like about this is that once you've done a search, it saves it over on the left here so you can find it again. I've been running through some iterations, testing things that I've tried in other conversational search, and I found the XI's uh, implementation of this AI search is actually pretty good. This first example didn't go too great. We've got 2,580 photographs in there. Way too broad and vague. And then we've got a moonshot here. You know, it's not brilliant. Remember the keywords where uh, we had the software didn't find any reference to seashells, despite the fact that they were front and center in the photograph. If you do conversational search, it does a much better job. So the search here is close up of seashells on a sandy beach, and it's done a pretty good job. There's a log there for some reason. You know, these are good. If I was looking for a photograph of seashells, you know, result. It found them for me. Good job. Here's a search for Australian wildlife. So I didn't define what kind of wildlife. I didn't say kangaroos or anything like that. And it understands. It found photographs of kangaroos. It also found photographs of people on a stand-up paddleboard with their dog. I suppose that qualifies as Australian wildlife. Let's try some of these other searches. This was a good one. City streets with street art on the walls. I think all of these were correct. So I tried bright pink colours in the sky. 786 search results from this one and this is pretty good you know you can't argue with the fact that there's a lot of pink in the vast majority of these photographs the only other software that i've used that has conversational ai based search is sime peak 2 click the small button up there to see my review of that and i have to say that xi search was average in comparison well it did an okay job of finding images within my catalog even on the strictest of settings a substantial percentage of the images were false positives in my testing i did find that XI I was stronger at some searches than others and I suspect that the training data set that the developers use was based more on urban wildlife and people than on landscapes but I could be wrong I'm just guessing the AI tools don't end with keywords and text search though there are other more specialized options. I'm a landscape photographer, and so the ability to find people isn't high on my list of requirements, but I put this tool to the test. One of the tools that XR Photos had for some time is a find faces tool. Now, I'm a landscape photographer, not a portrait photographer, and I know for a fact there aren't any portraits as such in here, but we'll test the tool because I know there are some photographs of people from various events that i photographed here's the tool you can see there's quite a bit of flexibility in here you can search for the number of faces in the photograph you can search for the age range you can switch genders and you can decide whether they're smiling or not if you want a combination of those you can of course select multiple items so just say i wanted adult and elderly and i want both male and female and i really don't care whether they're smiling or not and then we can hit the search and we get prince <laughs> now we won't hold this against xi just like i say i really don't know how many photographs of elderly people smiling or not in my archive we've got so we won't hold that against it let's do another search this time we'll search for people who aren't smiling one face male and see what we get well that certainly qualifies why didn't he come up in the previous search it's an elderly man not smiling oh Malk from acdc's made an appearance i didn't specify an age range on this search so these returns are fine so my results with the fine people tool was similar to the keywording and conversational search good 
but not excellent. Quite often, of course, it's hard to describe what you're searching for. And in such cases, the similarity search tool in Excite could prove useful. To use this, you simply select an image in the archive, click on the search icon and set your parameters in the Find Similar Photos window. You can search based on content or color and define how loose or strict you want the parameters to be. I found this worked well and unlike the other tools, equally good with landscape photographs as with images of wildlife or other subjects. I do wonder though if this tool actually uses machine learning or simply a regular algorithm of some kind. That brings us around to the new analytics tool which is designed to let you gain some insight into your photographic habits. Final big AI tool in XI Photo is an analytics suite which doesn't really serve any practical purpose but you know it's nice to have it in there you access it from the main menu here and it enables you to compare all of your photographs all the different metadata aspects of your photographs such as the camera and your most favored aperture and you can break them down into these visual forms here is a donut chart and i have got the f number selected as you can see f8 F8 and B there is my most popular, my favorite aperture setting, followed by 5.6, 7.1, F16. You don't just have to display in a donut. We can do a heat map as well, which enables us to pick a couple of elements. So, for instance, we could have the F number versus the camera and I can see what I primarily shoot at on my XT4 so that's f8 we already knew that but this is a nice way of breaking down the information XI photo has a lot going for it and is a solid choice for someone looking to move from a combined asset manager slash editor to a split system. It has a no-nonsense interface, which is pleasingly laid out and easy to use, with a simple triple pane design for navigation, thumbnails, and metadata. It's fast to use both during the input process and during actual use, and there is no lag when scrolling or resizing thumbnails. The organizational tools for ingesting photos and adding them to collections or groups are well designed and uncluttered. However, the real focus of this app is its AI, and that's where I found it slightly lacking. The AI keywording tool is only useful if you augment it with your own manual keywords, which kind of defeats the purpose. It's not inaccurate, just vague. I wanted to test the IPTC embedding for photographs with those keywords to see if they'd be visible in something like Lightroom. But unfortunately, XI disabled that function in the trial version I was using. The conversational text-based search is probably the strongest feature of this app. It's a good way of finding photographs when you don't know any of the metadata, date, camera, aperture, color, location, etc. I found it was better with some types of photographs than others, and that particularly with landscape photos, it lost focus after the first 30 or so, even at the strictest of search settings. It was certainly not as capable as my preferred asset manager, Sign Peak 2, which is just as fast and far more accurate. The Find Faces and Find People tools are both good. Face Finder is well designed and flexible, and the People tool is quick and simple way of finding specific people when you haven't included any metadata in the photo. At 250 Australian dollars for a one-time payment, XI Photo is good value for money. By comparison, Peak 2 is 317 Australian dollars for a one-time payment. And Milio, its other main competitor, is only available on subscription for 10 bucks a month. Given a straight choice between XI Photo and Sign Peak 2, I would choose Peak 2 every time. It can index existing photo catalogs such as Lightroom libraries alongside monitoring folders, has a better editor handoff facility with its workspaces functionality, has a nicer interface, has just as many tools and does AI better. I certainly wouldn't object to managing my photographs using XI Photo, but at the present time, there are better options on the market. And that'll do us for this video. Have you got a split photo management setup at the moment? Or do you let one app such as Lightroom handle it all for you? Do let me know in the comments section down below. Remember also to hit the old like button if you got value from this video. 
and consider subscribing for more photo, video and drone related content from me. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.